um, a few weeks ago. But um, so here's, here's a story of what happened. Um, the CEO of a company called Innovex Downhole Solutions. Downhole means down the hole. So it's oil and gas. So it's an oil and gas company. His name is Adam Anderson. Adam Anderson wanted to buy his employees a Christmas gift. A Christmas gift. So um, what he did was he contacted North Face, North Face, uh, and asked to get, I guess, some jackets, North Face jackets. You know, North Face uh, apparel, it's everywhere, right? Particularly, uh, particularly in, in, uh, for snowing and stuff like that. He wanted to get North Face apparel. And he wanted, uh, on the North Face apparel, he wanted the company logo, which is like not for distribution out there, just for the employees as a gift. It turns out, that he'd made this request in the past before of, of North Face and, and had distributed apparel uh, with the company logo on it. Anyway, he ordered 400 jackets um, from them. And then he heard back that his request had been rejected by North Face. Um, why? Well, because they had decided they would be inconsistent with their ESG policy, environmental, social, government policy, to have their logo, the North Face logo, associated with an oil and gas company because oil and gas companies, as we know, are evil companies. Bad for the planet. Destructive. Now, this happens. And you know what? This is going to happen more. But what usually happens is a CEO of a company like this says, okay, fine. I'll go find another company. And in this case, they did. I forget the name of the company, but they did find another company to produce the 400 jackets. But what is amazing about this is that Adam Anderson, the CEO, actually wrote a letter to North Face and made it an open letter, a letter that was published about this where he challenged them. He challenged them. Not only about the way they were doing business, but about, if you will, the morality of fossil fuels. <laughs> One of the funny things about the challenge was that he pointed out to North Face that the jackets had polyester in them and that that polyester was made of drum roll, Fossil fuels. North Face, indeed, would not have a business without fossil fuels. Their clothes have fossil fuels in them. They wouldn't have a business without fossil fuels because people couldn't come to their ski resorts and need their clothes without fossil fuel. I mean, you could go on and on and on. There's no civilization without fossil fuels. But what is amazing is here's a CEO who stood up and made the argument, and made it published, public. And on Twitter, there was a Twitter storm about this, the pro and the anti and the whole conversation, which is brilliant. This is exactly what we want. We want the conversation. Indeed, I believe that if we had more Adam Andersons, if we had more CEOs willing to take a stand like this, we would win. I think we'd win easily. But what's really even better than that, <laughs> even better than that, right, is that Anderson attributes his views about fossil fuels to our own, if I can call him our own, Alex Epstein. He attributes it, he says, he was, he says explicitly, he was inspired by Alex's book, The Moral Case for Fossil Fuel. Now, I think this is amazing. And this is part of the way in which you change a culture. Is Adam Anderson an objectivist? Probably not. Will he ever be an objectivist? Probably not. But he was influenced by a particular idea within objectivism. And he has been influenced in a way because of the way Alex presents these ideas, in a way that conveys important ideas about the world. 
the role of energy, the role of cheap energy, the importance, and the standard. Remember what the standard is. The standard is human life, not human suffering, not nature, not the environment, not spotted owls, not the ice cap, whatever. The standard is human life. And Adam Anderson has internalized that and has made that part of him, part of his views. And then has the courage, I think because of the moral certainty that he has received from Alex, to post a public letter explicitly advocating for these ideas. Right? And this has gotten a lot of publicity. I mean, he, he, he said, I mean, in this letter, he says, for example, without oil and gas, there would be no market for, no the ability to create the products your company sells, he's telling North Face. That's amazing. He writes, low-cost, reliable energy is critical to enable humans to flourish. I mean, that's straight out of Alex. So this kind of points us in the direction of how we're going to change the world. What we need are dozens of Alexes. We need an Alex in every major field. We need intellectuals making the case, influencing business leaders. And I think business leaders are going to be the key in the future. And we need to embolden business leaders, give them the intellectual ammunition, and then embolden them to speak up. Because when a CEO like Aaron Anderson speaks up, it has much more impact than even if Alex speaks. The Financial Times even commented and reported on the letter. Right? And even if they're critical of him, it creates a buzz. It creates interest. People say, where did Adam get this, these ideas? Oh, there's this book. Wow, that's a weird title. The Marquis of Fossil Fuels. So, you can see how this will grow and grow and grow. What we need is more objectivist intellectuals doing more work, independent or as part of institutes, or part of the Ironman Institute or not. The Institute has played no small role in getting Alex to where he is today, in my view. But this is how it grows. We need more and more and more people talking about these ideas, impacting decision makers, impacting people who have platforms, like Adam Anderson. So um, a lot of people are now questioning this ESG and, and the way it's going to be implemented. Um, and uh, it's going to be, this is great. I mean, this is, this is one of the best stories I've read in a long time. And uh, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for Alex. I'm excited for all of us uh, that this is, uh, this is possible. All right. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there 
help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share and uh, you can support the show at yourrunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if, you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>